Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yes, we're all settled in and we are about to start. So hello, everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network. So my name is Keisha Carter. I am the organizer of Entrepreneurs International Network, and I'm very thrilled for having a beautiful and amazing speaker for today, Catherine O'Leary. So Catherine will discuss attract more ideal clients now by bridging these three communication gaps. But before she comes to our virtual stage to talk about her talk, we want to discuss what EIN is and how you can get the most out of everything that EIN offers. So first and foremost, uh, for those who are first time here, EIN is an organization that helps entrepreneurs find free or inexpensive education that can help them to network and grow their entire business. So in every single event, we'll have education, networking session during our question and answer, and gratitude circle where you can find your potential joint venture partners and clients. We also have an app. It's called Entrepreneurs International Network. And to download them on your mobile phones, just head into Google Play or App Store and find Entrepreneurs, I-N-T-L Network, dot network to get access to a lot of other pieces of education. And I will just link this down in our chat box so you can click it later. And if you go to our official website, that is eintalks.com, you'll be able to see the recording of all the past events that we've had. Plus, you'll be able to take a peek on our upcoming events there and register there. So I highly recommend that you download their apps and visit our website so you can get access to all the information that I just shared. So today's event will run for an hour and 30 minutes and we'll have our speaker give her talk for 45 minutes. And after that, we'll have a 15 minute question and answer portion by the audience. And lastly, we'll give another 15 minutes for our audience to share their takeaways and their gratitude to our speaker. Then after that, we'll be wrapping up and close the event by 10.30 a.m. Pacific. And with that, let's go to our speaker today, Catherine O'Leary. Catherine helps businesses create cutting-edge client attraction systems that ensures only the most qualified clients make it through their doors. Within over 25 years of experience helping businesses attract ideal clients, she has an impressive track record with companies like Apple and Pepsi. And so we're so excited to have Catherine on our stage to share with us her talk and how we can attract more clients now by bridging three communication gaps in our business. Catherine, the floor is yours. Perfect. And can I uh, share my screen? Definitely. Perfect. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Where is everyone from? I, I see a couple of familiar faces as I get my screen share up here. There we go. Vancouver, Los Angeles. All right. I'm in Toronto, Gwen. Karen, I wish I was in Los Angeles. Toronto, Leon, down the street. Calgary, Garth, is it um, is it snowing? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Heavy snow here last night. Heavy snow. Yeah, that's why I don't live there. Um, <laughs> I have I have spent two weeks in in Edmonton uh, in January once, um, and I will only do it once because it was cold. All yeah, right. too much snow. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, so I am just going to go ahead and get started here. Um, let's just get the slideshow going. There we go. Perfect. I think. There we go. All right. So what I wanted to talk to you today is really about attracting more ideal clients. So one of the things that you know, entrepreneurs, all businesses, all businesses, you need, you need clients, you need clients in the door, right? I mean, that's, that's no state secret. Um, the trick though, that I found is, and I don't know if you guys have found is that a lot of the times there's a gap, right? There's, there's kind of a, 
a gap between the problem that our ideal clients are trying to solve and the solution that we have. And, and our job is really to bridge that gap. So how many people here would like more ideal clients in their pipeline and be able to, you know, stop wasting time with the freebie kickers and the tire, the, you know, the tire kickers and the freebie seekers. Anyone, anyone tired of the brain pickers, right? Of the people that, that kind of waste your time on the phone or maybe, um, maybe you have some postings or some um, even paid ads going out and you're just not attracting the right people and you end up spending a lot of time vetting those people that are kind of really ready for you versus um, versus people that just aren't. And what we want to do is we want to bridge that gap. So I want to help you, you know, actually help your ideal clients get from the problem that they need to solve, that you are really good at solving them um, and, and help them to the solution. Because what we, what we tend to do is as entrepreneurs, as the people that already have the solution, we're on the other side of the problem, right? So when you're on the other side of the problem, you actually speak of the problem um, in a different language and in a different way than if you're in like, you know, knee deep in the weeds of the problem. So we need to go back and remember what our ideal clients are actually struggling with, the words that they use, the the way that they're referring to the problem, the way that they talk to their best friend or their, um, you know, their significant other, whatever. Like, what are they waking up at 3 a.m., worrying about, desiring, and so on? And how can we capture that so that we can we can help them? Because what we want to do is help them from the problem that they have to the solution that we have. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about today is really, uh, I'm going to talk about three of these communication gaps is, you know, how to navigate or how to help your ideal client navigate between the problem that they have and the, you know, the language that they're using to the solution that you have. So what are the stepping stones? What are the questions that you can ask? What, how can you get curious and how can you make them curious about how to, you know, uh, solve those problems in order to, you know, uh, find you and your solution. And then how do you build authority with that curiosity and questions? And then we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this 3 a.m. question and, ha and how, to, um, how to really understand what your ideal clients are saying and thinking uh, when they're, you know, when they're really struggling, when they're in knee deep into the, the problem of the, um, of whatever it is that, you know, that, your business happens to help them with. Um, so thank you everyone for being here. I appreciate your time. I want to thank uh, the Entrepreneur um, Entrepreneurs International Network as well. I am associated with Success Road Academy. I've been working with Amon, uh, a guy for uh, a number of years now, and we just came off the JVX uh, live event in Las Vegas. It was a lot of fun. Um, and um, so I thank everyone uh, for being here and for having me. Um, so a little bit about me. If you don't know me, I'm known as the quiz queen. I didn't grow up wanting to be the quiz queen. I wanted to be the wolf of Wall Street. And so I went to business. Uh, I went through uh, university um, as a, uh, an economist. So I, I have two degrees in economics. And I went to corporate and I um, worked for several Fortune 50 companies always in that market research and consumer insights focus. So my job really was to be curious, right? To ask a lot of questions of a lot of people about the products, the services, what they were using, what they liked, what they didn't like, what their challenges were, and then take that information and translate it for the, um, uh, for the corporation to turn that into new products, new services. So what was the white space opportunities that, you know, the the Jim Beams or the American Expresses could could help their clients with or what messaging needed to be tweaked or, you know, what sales offers, what bundles could we put together? We did a lot of, you know, with Pepsi um, and Pepsi owns Lay's. So there's a lot of food and, and beverage bundles that we put together, the Super Bowl package the, you know, the July 1st weekend package um, or the July 4th uh, package. So things like that. 
a lot of that information, a lot of those decisions were made based on client feedback. So based on customer feedback, and this is what corporations do really well. It's something that entrepreneurs tend not to do. We tend not to ask a lot of questions of our ideal clients, right? So what I want, what I'm, what I'm going to challenge you today is to really think, how can you get curious? How can you get curious about what, what your ideal clients are dealing with, what they're talking about, what they're struggling with, and then how can you uh, meet them where they're at? Uh, so that you can help them with the solutions that you have. Um, when I started my entrepreneurial um, journey, I started in network marketing and that was great. We we traveled a lot. This is in Thailand on the boat. Um, we I met a lot of great people. The products were really great, but what wasn't great was my lead generation. So I was doing all the things wrong like everything that you could possibly imagine of the wrong way to attract the wrong people to your to your um, calls or to your webinars or so on, I was doing. I was doing paid advertising that wasn't going anywhere. I was doing sales calls, trying to convince people, like if I could just get them on the call, you know, like, like if you just get them on the call, they're going to fall in love with me and they're going to want to buy, right? Anyone else feel that way sometimes? Where if you could just talk to them, you'd be able to to get them connected. Anyone with me there? No hands, some hands, some some nods. Yeah, okay. Um, that obviously doesn't work, right? <laughs> um, so at least it didn't for me. And I ended up wasting a lot of time and a lot of money really fishing in the wrong pond. So I, you know, I got to a point where I just wanted to stay under the covers because if I had to spend another hour with a person that was just going to say no or pay another $600 to LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever for advertising that wasn't going to go anywhere, I had to make a choice, right? And, and this is kind of where the rubber hit the road for me, where I really had to figure this out, this lead generation thing out, or I had to go back to corporate. Right. So, it, you know, one of the other things and for me going back to corporate meant getting back in the car for three hours a day because that's what my commute was. And, you know, as I thought through that, I was like, mm, I don't think that there are enough podcasts or audiobooks in the world to make me get back in the car for three hours a day. So I needed to figure this out. Um, I went on a little bit of an adventure and I found quizzes. And with my background with market research and consumer insights, we always asked these questions and it just seemed natural to me that, of course, that's what I was missing in my own business. I needed to ask more questions so that I could find my ideal clients or more, more specifically, so they could find me. So let's, let's make like, let's have them go through the, the process, the selection process so that when they get to me, they're ready to go. Right. And, and what are the, you know, what are the steps to that? And we're going to go through a little bit of that, but really it's about stopping the scroll, which is really honing in on that 3 a.m. problem that we were talking about. It's about that coffee chat that, you know, what are the stepping stones between the problem that they have and the solution that you have? Right. And then it's about uh, the done deal. It's, it's really about um, you know, making sure you're showing up with authority and, um, you know, expertise, and then you invite them to the next step. So they've gone through a little bit of a self-discovery journey with you. Um, they're answering their questions of their 3 a.m. What's bothering me at night? And then you're able to invite them to say, hey, you know, here's, here's, um, here's a baby solution, or here's, here's a couple of things that you can do immediately. If you walk away right now, you know, you've gotten, you know, part of the way through your solution. But if you want more help, you know, let's let's get on a webinar. Let's get on a masterclass. Let's get on a call, whatever that looks like. Does that make sense? Everyone? Cool. Um, so now I am the founder of the um, Ideal Client Academy. I am the host of a podcast called Kickstart the Conversation. Uh, I'm an author. I'm also a speaker. And all this to say that I love what I do. I fell back in love with asking questions and being super curious about what people are doing and how can I help them in a unique and innovative way that they can they can go through a process where they decide whether or not I'm right for them. 
without it taking a lot of time on their end or on my end. So it's a win-win for both of us. So as promised, I um, wanted to go through the bridging the gaps, um, really how to navigate um, the, the pathway uh, for your, your ideal client, how to build that authority and how to um, you know get to that 3 a.m. question all with that kind of curiosity quizzes, um, you know, how that all works. So any, any questions so far? Are we all good? All right. So gap number one. So if you, if you remember my bridge, right? So you need to navigate, you need to be the hand that holds the person across the, the gap in the bridge. So the problem that they have and the solution that you have a lot of people, what they do is say, hey, do you have this problem? Boom, here's the solution. You know, let, let's go forward with the solution. And it's a little like proposing marriage on the first date, right? You haven't asked them anything. You don't know, actually, if your solution is right for them yet. And they don't know you and don't know if your, if your solution is right for them. So let's, you know, ask a few questions. Let's, you know, ask them about, you know, where they are in their journey, um, where they are in the, in their challenges, what they, what they hope for, what they aspire to do, what, you know, what they are, um, are needing and so on so that we can meet them where they're at, but we can also make sure that they are the solution that we have is a fit for them. Right. And so we want to put them in a position to figure that out because honestly, there's a lot of noise out there your clients, your ideal clients are looking for you. Like they, they're waking up at 3 a.m. with this problem. They want a solution, right? And what we have to do is we have to make sure that we are navigating them or helping them find us. And sometimes that's more than just, you have this problem, I have this solution. It takes a little more thought. It takes a little more of, of let me get to know you kind of a journey, right? And our job is to help them on that journey, is to help them navigate to the solution, especially for our ideal clients, the clients that you know are ready to to work with us, that we know that we can help. It's it. This is not about um, about vetting or about make you know like um, kicking anyone out. This is about making sure that only the people that are right for you get to you to begin with, because as entrepreneurs, your time is ultra valuable, right? Time is the one thing that you don't have a lot of. So you don't want to be wasting it or giving it away to people that are not right for your products or services um, or your, you know, for your community or your tribe. You want to be a bit of a gatekeeper, not only to your, um, to your time and your calendar, but also to your community, right? You're, you're nurturing that. That's your tribe. That's your community. That's your, you know, um, that's your family in some cases. And, and you don't want to be, um, just letting anyone into that. So you really, you kind of need to start with the end in mind. So, you know, starting at that solution, um, and then working backwards is able to, you know, you know, where they're going to end up, you know, that you want them to end up at this solution, right? And if they're your ideal clients, that's where they're going to need to end up. So how do you reverse engineer that to, okay, here's the problem that you have. What are those two or three questions or stepping stones that if you were sitting down with the best friend and they had this problem and you had you know, 15 minutes with a coffee chat, what questions would you ask? Those are the kinds of questions that we're talking about for a lead generation quiz, right? Um, that's what my, my one client, Nikki, does. Um, she has a, a book and her book and um, the um, What Color Is Your Chameleon was her solution, right? So she started knowing that she wanted to be offering people, her ideal clients, people that are, you know, struggling with change and wanting to understand how to be able to handle change better, you know, um, based on how they react to change. She wanted to make sure that they all went to her book. And so we started with the book and we started with what the book actually delivered. And then we kind of said, okay, the people that need this book or the people that will benefit most from this book are struggling with what are, you know, they're desiring what they are, you know, what questions can we ask them about how you manage change or how you um, react to different situations or how it makes you feel when this or this happens. And those are the kinds of questions 
that as people on the front end, I, I don't like change. So we, you know, our quiz was what color is your inner chameleon? And, you know, it's all about reacting, adapting to change. So anyone that is waking up at 3 a.m. and thinking, oh, I wish I'd handled that situation better at work, or I wish I didn't have to move, or I wish I didn't have to, you know, think about changing jobs because that makes me nervous or it makes me upset or makes me mad. This is the this is the the quiz for them. She asks a few specific questions that lead them through a journey to say, oh, you're kind of hardwired to react to change this way or that way. Um, this is what you can do to manage that change. If you want to learn more, here's the book, right? So she's now on her book launch tour um, and doing that. And what she's really good at is making sure that her quiz goes everywhere, right? So it it drives to the book. She talks about it on her podcast, the quiz. Uh, she offers the quiz as her freebie, whether she's guesting or she's on her own podcast. Um, everyone goes through the quiz and then goes to the book. So it all, like it all funnels right now to the book. And later it will funnel to the course that she creates based on the book, right? So it switches out once once the book launch is done. So you want to be starting with with the solution and reverse engineering, and it's it's those stepping stones, it's those pieces that help people along the way to your solution. Right. Um, the the next kind of gap is that you want to be oops that you want to be making sure that you are helping people across the bridge on is really building your authority, right? So, you know, there's lots of ways to showcase your authority. Um, whether you're speaking, whether you're on podcasts, whether you're doing paid advertising, maybe you're posting, um, maybe you're on summits, TV shows, radio shows, you know, wh whatever that looks like, you know, being able to showcase your expertise is great. But if you're not capturing people that are listening to you and able to then follow up with you and you can follow up with them, it's a missed opportunity. So I see a lot of podcast, um, you know, guests or speakers that don't have a way for people to connect with them once they've done talking, right? So like, how can you make sure that you have something that they can go into quickly to find out, oh, she talked about, you know, how I react and change uh, to change. Um, and I want to adapt better to change. I'm going to go take the chameleon quiz. Now Nikki has your email. Right. And now she can follow up with you. And now she knows what your reactions to change are and how how she can help you. Right. So by by showcasing your authority, um, you know, every time you speak, every time you're in networking and so on, you can you can use your quiz, but also the questions that you use, the way that you frame your reports, the way you frame the videos that you might produce, it all speaks to your authority. Right. So so you're going to be the authority as as people are going through because you are providing different ways to think of things. Maybe you ask a question they didn't think of. Maybe in your answers that you provide for a question has a you know an answer that they didn't think of. Um, I know my my cousin is a realtor in, in Toronto. And if you know anything about Toronto, there's a there's a north and a south end. The south end is on the, the water and the north end is on the commuting corridor. You can't have both right? You can't be by the lake and you can't be, you know, quick access to, to the corridor. So one of her questions in her quiz was, you know, on location, do you want to be by the corridor or do you want to be by the beach? And it was a check only one. And people were like, well, wait, I want both. That opened the door for her to say, you can't have both. It's probably somebody that doesn't know the, the, you know, Toronto landscape very well. And she was able to open that conversation then with them to say, oh, well, we need to talk about this because, you know, it's one or the other, or if we need both, then, you know, we need to to figure out where you're going and where you're commuting to. So that's how you can kind of step up your authority is making people think differently, making people, um, you know, questions that, you know, didn't occur to them yet. Um, and then in your reports and how you deliver your reports is, you know, really making able to connect with people, especially people, you know, right where they're at, right? You're able to connect with 
the person in Toronto that wants to be at the beach, you can you can connect with them about all about, you know, being by the lake and what it means to be by the lake. And for the people that are in the North End, what it means to be in the North End and all the great things about being in the North End. Or, you know, uh, for Nikki, it was all about if you're, you know, if you react negatively to change, how can you, how can you, you know, um, adapt to change a little bit better so you're a little less stressed about it. Um, or if you, um, you know, have a lot of anxiety about change, there are different things that you need to do versus somebody that gets angry. So really connecting with your clients and stopping and making them think um, and shining with your solutions, right? You are the authority. You have created this great process or this great course, this offer, this, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, this, this speaking material, whatever it is, you can shine with your authority in, in the way that you deliver not only your questions, but your reports and your follow-up because follow-up is, is huge, right? So when you're following up with somebody, can you be customized um, to what they were, uh, what they were actually challenged with? Um, my clients, uh, Dave and Susan Kenny, they're, they're amazing. They created a quiz about what, what is your coaching superpower? And it was a way to get people to think about their coaching and what their superpower was, but it was also a way for Dave and Susan to say, okay, great. You are an empathetic coach, for example. Here's your kryptonite though. Here's where someone like somebody that is an empathetic coach might run into some challenges. It might be boundaries that you don't have. Um, you might take on too much. Um, you know, like like this is how you can burn out as an empathetic coach. And this is what they help with, right? They help coaches that, you know, create boundaries or or you know, create that safe container for themselves personally, as well as for their clients. So, you know, they, they're they able to show up as the authority. They're able to meet their clients where they're at. Yes, you're an empathetic um, coach. And as a recovery coach, that's going to be amazing. Here's some dangers or here's some things you need to watch out for. Here's what you can do about it. If you want to learn more, we can go to the next the next phase. And what they found was that their quiz, um, they had like a 92% conversion rate on the people that went through the quiz and then ended up on a sales call. It was the easiest sales call that they'd ever had because those people were their ideal clients. It was a done deal. They were ready to go, right? So you really want to make sure that when you are bridging these communication gaps, you're, you know, you're taking them through the solution. You're able to build your authority and, and you're able to get them to that, that point where, yeah, like you're my people and I'm your people. And let, like, let's, let's go with that. And this is probably the biggest uh, fundamental gap in, in most entrepreneurs um, kind of wheelhouse is understanding your, th the 3am questions. So in order to stop the scroll, like I say, like whether it's in Facebook posting or whatever, you got to stop people in their tracks. And the best way to do that is to stop them with a problem that they are already talking about with their best friend or they're waking up at 3 a.m. But the trick to this is in their language, right? So one of the things I often say is, you know, I build and, and help help people, um, you know, understand and build quiz funnels. Um, you know, so from, from the quiz to, you know, the emails and the follow-up and, and so on, no one in the history of ever has ever woken up thinking, I just wish my quiz funnel could be better. Right? No, like me, Ryan Levesque and maybe Russell Brunson have ever thought that ever. It's not the language. It's not the language my ideal clients use. They wake up thinking, I wish I could get um, higher quality leads or I wish I could get more, more clients, right? Or I wish I, this could be automated. I wish, I wish this was on autopilot, right? Clear beats clever every single day of the week. So making sure that you are, you know, in your, your ideal client's frame of reference, making sure that you understand their language like how do they talk about their 3 a.m question like what is the language that they use and there are there are various different ways to do this on um, their free marketing tools that you can use like just go on to amazon 
put your topic into the book section and see what books have been written recently about your topic, right? Those, that, those people have already done a lot of this research. So you can get some language patterns out of that. You can just go into Google and see what's been searched on your topic, right? And, and see what comes up to, to see some language patterns. But really, and obviously the absolute best market research that you can ever do is asking your ideal clients, right? Like, what are you waking up at 3 a.m.? What do you think of? What What is the problem that I can help you solve um, around your relationship, around your business, around, um, you know, your your health, what, you know, whatever it is that you help them with. So that 3 a.m. question, and again, that tends not to be hugely markety, I call it. It's, it's like a very technical term, but it, it tends not to be like very, you know, flowery, very, like we get, we get overly clever with our the way that we market and it misses, it misses that 3 a.m. question. It misses that urgency. It misses that you know, geez, if I could just solve this, or I just wish I could, or how do I, right? And again, like knowing your ideal client, this is where it's really super important to make sure that you've niched down. Because if you solve, if you solve for everyone, like if you think of everyone, everyone doesn't have the same 3 a.m. question, right? So if you have more than one 3 a.m. question that you're struggling with, is there a chance for you to niche down even further, right? So what is that one 3 a.m. question you really want to hone in and in on for your, for your ideal clients? So for example, my, my one client, Marty, she's a divorce coach, right? And there's a lot going on with, with, you know, when somebody's going through a divorce, she actually helps people that have made the decision for a divorce and before they get to the lawyer. So she's really niched down. Um, and basically what we came up with is that they had to cut through the fog of divorce. That's what a lot of her clients say is like, it's, it's just a fog. Like, I don't know even where to start. Everything's up in the air. I don't see a way forward. Um, you know, they can't really prioritize. They're not sure what exactly is going on. Um, and, and it's very emotional and, and it's hard to cut through all of that to get to, before I hit the lawyer's office, I need to have my priorities straight so I'm not wasting time in that office trying to do that, right? So that's what she helps with. So that's that's why we came up with, you know, you know, what's your um, number one priority to cut through the fog of divorce? Um, and that that's doing well for her. Um, and then Kelly, uh, Kelly is doing a lot of actually Facebook ads. And, um, one thing that, that, you know, her 3am question, which is very, you know, kind of energy light worker, um, you know, side of things, you know, what shadow work, um, what's your shadow work readiness score. And she has dropped her, uh, Facebook ad cost from, it was a dollar 25 a lead to 81 cents a lead. That's a 36% drop in advertising costs. Right. And she's able to build lookalike audiences and so on around this Facebook uh, group. So it's cumulative, it's cumulative, you know, as she drops her, her Facebook ads and gets better qualified people, she gets more honed in on her lookalike audience and is able to go back out to that audience. And it just, you know, it keeps reciprocating. Um, not saying that paid advertising is for everyone because it's not, this is what, you know, what's good for her right now. Uh, but you know, um, for cold traffic, which is what, you know, what Facebook would be or LinkedIn ads or anything like that. This is why having the 3 a.m. question, being able to, to really connect with your ideal client ends up resulting in, in, um, you know, sales because she's actually able to convert those people into sales, um, which sometimes your Facebook ads don't do. At least mine never did. <laughs> so, um, and her 3 a.m. question, you know, that that what's your shadow work readiness score? Her people, I have no idea what that means, personally. Her people know exactly what that means. Like they they are absolutely honed in on it. So I wouldn't take this quiz, which is brilliant because it's not it's not for me. I'm not her audience. I'm not I'm not somebody that probably would be interested in her community or her offers right so i'm okay that somebody like me wouldn't take her quiz because somebody like me shouldn't be on her calendar 
or shouldn't be in her like you know in necessarily in her um in her list because you want you want those people that are really super um ready to go so like you know they're they're ready to to connect so just a recap of the gaps we've got what we've got here uh you want to be the guide so that navigation you want to shine as the expert and you really want to make sure that you're understanding that 3 a.m problem so once you have that 3 a.m problem and you can connect the dots and you know how to connect the dots to your solution and you're the authority by providing the questions that make sense to them and in a logical order to get to the solution that they have in the report and the, you know, the invite to the next step, right? Then you've done a lot of the work for vetting them and making sure that, you know, they're ready to go. Not everyone will be, but you're a lot closer to that, to that point in time than you were before, right? So your gap, your, your bridge is, is now, you know, complete. Um, and, and people are able to, you know, connect to you and to your offer without having to jump through a whole bunch of hoops and without you having to, you know, babysit or, you know, take somebody's hand and, and try to cross the bridge when people shouldn't be, you know, maybe in on your side of the bridge. So the bonus is really that invite. The bonus secret is, is in the, the follow-up, right? So now you've got people, you, you've tagged them, you know exactly where they are in the problem and, and in their journey, you're able to connect with them. Um, and now you've got a chance to follow up with them. You've got an email list, you know, you can follow up with an email sequence on the quiz. You're delivering the reports. You've got, you've delivered the, the web, um, the video, and, you know, you can create masterclasses for them that may be separate. Maybe everyone goes to one. You can invite some people to a call because they're super hot leads. Maybe some people should go to a sales page because they're more, um, you know, they're more, um, it's more appropriate for them to maybe start at a different part, part, like, you know, part of your product ascension ladder, whatever that works for you. But once they're invited, you've got a, you've got a room full of people that are already pre-qualified. Right, whether that's your masterclass or it's on your calls or so on, because here's here's the scary thing, right? Um, eighty percent of the downloads that are that you know your checklists, your eBooks, your um, blueprints, and so on. I don't know um, how many people have that that folder on their computer that you absolutely intend to go back to, but that all your downloads go into to read later. Right. Like, and, and you do, you mean to go back to them because it looks really good. And then you go back to it and you have absolutely no idea who was what or what that file name means. And you never read them. I have, I have like, I don't know, probably two years worth of lead magnets and so on in that folder that I've never opened again. I see Garth like shaking his head. Yes. Um, that, that he has that folder. I, I think everyone has that folder, right? We're kind of, we're kind of inundated by the information. And, and without, you know, kind of a real time um, access to the results, you miss out. So somebody might be on your list, but if they never opened your, your content, then are they really good for your list? Like if you haven't, you know, sent them through a little bit of a qualification process, right? So you really want to magnetize um, your leads. It's not, and I'm not saying that whatever you like, Facebook posts, uh, like if you're posting, if you're podcasting, if you're doing summits, giveaways, all of that is great. There are a hundred million different ways to market your business, right? But how do you amplify it? How do you make it more efficient? How do you make whatever you're doing, whatever lights you up, whatever, you know, gives you, um, you know, that, that sense of, yeah, that's really cool. I like networking or I like doing Facebook lives or I like paid advertising, whatever it is. But just by adding this simple conversation, I'm going to show you how you can give yourself a 600% increase in, in your, you know, in your sales. Um, not by adding more marketing, not by, you know, like I'm not a social media person. I don't tend to post a lot other than for my podcast. Um, I, I don't want to learn TikTok, 
right? Like God bless the people that can make that work for them. I, like that just sends me wanting to scream into the night. That's my 3 a.m. nightmare, right? Like I, it's just, it's not my gig. I like to, I like to speak I on stages, on podcasts, on, um, on summits and so on. I don't have to layer on TikTok to make this work. I just need to maybe connect the dots between whatever I'm doing and that that conversation of sales, right? So between the the 3 a.m. question and the webinar, the masterclass, um, the the one-on-one -on -one conversation, how can you give yourself um, a raise of um, a significant raise? So I'm gonna go through a little bit of math here. So at the top here on the left, we've got a whole bunch of you know ways that you can um, market. LinkedIn, Facebook, joint venture partners, speak to sell, networking, Instagram, you know, there's, there's TikTok, there's threads, there's Facebook lives, there's summits, there's giveaway, like there's a hundred things, right? And, and we're just going to go through some quick math. So um, a typical funnel is, you know, you have an email list, so you have some leads, um, that you want to invite to a, a what I call a sales vehicle, like a, a webinar or a masterclass, and you're going to make an offer um, and say that, you know, um, let's just set the context. You've got a thousand people that you've invited to a webinar, maybe 10% actually show up. I'm being super conservative here. This is not saying that this is actually, you know, what industry standard is. I'm just trying to make the math easy. Um, so you get a hundred people in the room on your webinar close five five percent of the room right so you get five people to buy a thousand dollar product that's a five thousand dollar day that's a good webinar it's not bad it's four figures right um I take that um but what if you could improve it right so you do nothing else different except for add this conversation piece except for add this question this curiosity this quiz right? If nothing else changes, right? So your 10%, you know, of, of leads go to your webinar and 5% buy. But what if you could triple the amount of leads, right? So if you triple the amount of leads, because because you've got the 3 a.m. question, you're hitting them where where they're they're living, they're they're um, you know, where they're actually struggling, they're they're connecting with that that question. So if you can get more leads, and this is this is actually what happened with my network marketing uh, quiz when I first started, I tripled my leads and I doubled my sales. Um, you know, that 3,000, you've done nothing else differently, right? You've just created a quiz that you're marketing that, that 3 a.m. question to. You know, if nothing else changes, you've got 300 people in the room. You've got, um, you know, 15 people that buy. That's a That's a five-figure day. Right now you're at fifteen thousand. Right now, what if two things happen? You triple your leads and you double your sales. Now you got thirty people buying. You still haven't done any more advertising. You still haven't done any more marketing. Right, you're just making it more efficient. Um, and now you've got a thirty thousand dollar day. Like that's a six hundred percent increase. Right, like I'm up for anyone else up for a six hundred percent increase in their day to day lives. Really, no one. Yeah, Jeffrey, thank you, Hillary. Yeah, Leon. Okay, good. How so? This so so now the the question is that's great, Catherine. How the hell do I do that? Right, like, <laughs> um, and the and the way and I've been alluding to it is that it all wraps up into a a quiz that you can create for your business that starts with the 3 a.m. question that leads people and navigates them through to your solution with questions that act as those stepping stones and then shows your authority with the questions and the reports and so on that you can then provide to people. They get the value, right? They walk away with, with a solution or, you know, the start of a solution to their 3 a.m. question and you you know, you get their, obviously their email, but you also get their data, the data that they're, you know, they're giving to you in the, in the quiz and you're able to connect with them. And for those that, you know, take that next step to the invite, they're, they're already well more qualified than, than, you know, just cold traffic coming in. Right. So 
here's what I love about quizzes is that they work with any marketing strategy. Like any marketing strategy that you can think of, you can use your quiz as your free gift, right? You go on summits, the free gift that they ask you to, if they ask you um, to give, you can give your, it's your lead magnet. Like, the, like people are getting value out of it. So use it on your summits, use it on as a podcast guest, um, use it as a gift giveaway, use it in networking. Um, I used it in the grocery store the other day because somebody asked me what I did. I said, well, here, you know, just go to this website, quizformybiz.com. You'll see what I do. I help people create these, this kind of thing. Um, and it can be, you know, your wingman or your wing woman um, in any situation. So you can always be um, offering your quiz to people. Right. Put it on your emails, put it on your business cards, put it on your book. You know, the book, the quiz can go to the book. The book they can can then go back to the quiz. Because here's one thing that Amazon doesn't do. Amazon doesn't give you the email of the person that's bought your book. So if they buy your book and you, and they take the quiz, then now you've captured their email. Or if you're speaking on stage and they take your quiz, now you've captured their email. Right. Um, if you're on a podcast or you have a podcast and you have a great big huge audience, but you don't actually have their email addresses, have them take your quiz. And now you're building your email list because your email list is a business asset that, you know, you can actually monetize, right? So you want to be building that all the time, but you want to be building it with your ideal clients, right? And it's also a way, your quiz is a way that customizes your communications so that you are always the person that is ready to you know converse with the guy that's st that's standing in front of the multicolored you know um volkswagen in front of the rainbow like if that's your ideal client you can find that person right they're in your list if that happens to be your ideal client right so you can find like you can make sure that you can tailor your custom like your personalization your customization and your in your communications to ensure that you are um connecting with people because here's here's this shift that's happening out there right now is that people are expecting relationships. They're done being sold to, right? They're done with the urgency. They're done with the, the limited time offer. This only applies for the next 12.2 seconds. Otherwise, it's going to go away forever, of course, until tomorrow when it, when we do it all again, right? People are wise to that. They're, they're, not, they're not responding to that anymore because now it's about, I've spent that money. Right. Like I've done that and I didn't get the results. So what's different about you? What's what's different is that you're building a relationship right from the get go with them. You're asking them about them. It's their favorite favorite subject. Right. For them to talk about themselves and for you to offer solutions to them. Right. Now, if you'd like your own free customized report about the gaps that your business might have you can go to quizformybiz.com, right? So that you can uncover those gaps and that gives you a free personalized report around you know, what gaps you might be facing in your business and how to bridge those gaps for your ideal clients, right? Here's the deal. I wanna make sure that you're connecting to your ideal clients as easily and as abundantly as possible because they're looking for you. They're struggling. They're struggling with their 3 a.m. question and they might be struggling to find you. So let's make it easy, right? Let's make it easy for them to find you. Let's make it easy for them to connect with you because you're not wasting time trying to you know, get through some of the noise to get to the ideal clients, okay? And then if you'd like to learn more about you know, client uh, attraction um, and kind of the client attraction mastery, we go through all of this in a lot more detail um, there is a, a webinar coming up um, and the, the um, I'll, I'll put these, uh, these links in the chat as well, but uh, Tuesday, November 7th, you know, we go through this in a little bit more detail. I actually do a fun, I think it's fun. I have a lot of fun with it, um, doing um, live um, quiz creation. So, we, you know, you can come on and you can get, um, you know, ideas for your quiz and, and how, what questions to ask and how to frame that. And, um, and, and we go through like bridging those gaps and exactly how to do that and exactly what, you know, um, what you can do to, uh, to create a strategy that works with your business, that works with your current marketing, 
that just makes everything more efficient, right? So you're just amping up the, the, the effort that you're already putting in. You're not adding more, right? And that's what I have for today. I have no idea how I'm doing on time, um, but wanted to open it up to any questions because I feel like I talked fast, like I always do. And I um, want to make sure that everyone's cool. Uh, I'm just going through the chat now and there is, I'm enjoying your presentation. How would you apply this to an example for a photography business. Oh my gosh, this is fun. Um, okay, so is Corey still here? No, let's see Corey. Um, photography business would be something, um, so are you, um, Corey, are you here? See, you're on, you're not on camera. So photography, oh, food product, uh, Corey, my focus is food and product photography. Who's your ideal client, Corey? Is it magazines? Is it, ah, real estate photography. What's the challenge that your ideal client is having? Is it finding the right person to take their photos? Uh, Perfect, perfect. So maybe, maybe it's something along, Corey, maybe, um, maybe you could create a quiz, something along the lines of, you know, what's, um, like, what's your magazine image score? Like, almost like, like, what's your Vogue score? You know, like, like, are you ready for Vogue? Like, are you ready for the, for the cover? Are you ready for the cover of real estate magazine? Um, something along those lines and what you could do is say you know what are you challenged with when you are um th you know the types of questions you can ask are around you know where do you like do you take the pictures yourself right now for your real estate let's use real estate for now do you take pictures yourself or do you have them uh, professionally done if you take them yourself what maybe what um equipment they use uh maybe you ask them what their biggest challenge is uh, when the pictures come, is it overexposure? Is it they don't look good? Is it they're not um, staged well? So on and so forth. And then maybe you can um, end the quiz with outcomes such as, um, you know, this is how you stage, you know, a um, a photo a photo for, you know, a room in a in a home that's for sale or a um, you know the the outside the curb appeal. Um, so maybe it's staging, maybe it's, you know, equipment to use, maybe it's um, ideas around decor or, you know, props or something like that to make the, the image pop. And then, um, and then you can invite them to, you know, um, learn more about, about how to, to get their photography, like their photographs professionally done. And that leads to a one-on-one a, a -on -one call with you. Um, if you're, if you're starting out, that'd probably be the best way to do it. Um, as far as the technology on how to, um, create quizzes and, and put them out there, it's kind of like, um, does everyone have a customer relationship management system, a CRM? Yes, no hand up if you have a CRM. Okay. Um, so, um, so CRM is, is effectively where your email list might sit and it, it kind of, um, it controls when you do and, uh, you know, your automations and your emails and so on. A quiz, there's lots of technology solutions from free to, you know, kind of hyper expensive. Depends on how many um, quizzes you want to do, how much, how much traffic you're going to drive to it. I typically use Interact um, for my uh, quizzes. It's a really good uh, technology solution. It's middle of the road. It's not the cheapest. Um, it's not the most expensive. It does what it, you know, it does a really good job. They've got good templates and so on. Um, so I, I don't have a technology solved myself. There's lots out there. So it really just depends on what you want to use. I've One of the things that I absolutely will never suggest is Google Forms um, because it makes your quiz look like a mortgage application and nobody has fun with that. Um, 
or survey monkey because that starts to get into some difficulties in getting your data and paid programs that aren't aren't really all that um easy to figure out so um but there are lots there's um, there's lots of technology solutions out there, but yeah, I, I, I partner with interact, um, myself, uh, how to narrow down on the ideal client and finding out their biggest challenge. I'm a hypnotherapist, energy healer. So again, the best way to find out what your ideal clients are struggling with is to ask them. Uh, if you are finding a hard time finding your ideal clients to have a conversation with um, about, you, you know, their 3 a.m. problem, you're going to have a hard time finding them to market to. So make sure that, you know, you can find people to talk to about their 3 a.m. question. Um, outside of that, you know, there's um, there's, you know, you can you can put your topic into Google. Um, you can put your talk in, topic into Amazon. Uh, Google will give you the YouTube videos that are being watched around your topic. Um, you can go on to Spotify or Apple uh, Podcasts to find out what podcasts are being uh, listened to. So people are reading about, searching for, listening about, and watching information um, about your topic from all sorts of different places. These are places that you can go to kind of get a sense at least for like from a free market research point of view um, of what they're, they're searching for, you know, what, you know, people are talking about, um, what people are writing about and so on. Does that help? Excellent. No problem, Karen. Any other questions? Hi, Catherine, I have a question actually. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so in the beginning, so let's say you are at a, at a networking event. Mm -hmm. um, how would you start the conversation? Like, um, how would you introduce yourself? Would you start to get your client talking? Like, um, could you ask your client the question first about their business? Or should we introduce ourselves or our business first? Yeah. So the, the trick with networking or with any kind of joint venture partnership is, um, is to support first. So how can I support you? Right. So tell me about your business so I can, I can better support you. Right. So it's, it's getting the other person to go first. Right. So you go first, like you, you tell me your business, you tell me what you're struggling with. And then you can say, Oh, that's interesting. Cause that's what I do. I help people. And then you can say, you know, I help, Entrepreneurs create client attraction systems that attract the best and release the rest. I do that all day, every day, right? Mm -hmm. If it makes sense. But if you're going to a networking event to find clients, I would reframe that. I would go to networking events to find opportunities to have conversations. I wouldn't go necessarily to immediately start selling somebody or to try and, and um, uh, close somebody. I would go with, how can I help you? Like how, like, what's your business? Can I support? Or do I know somebody that can support? Um, so I would, I would never lean in with, this is who I am. This is what I do. And does that interest you? That's going to turn people off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Cause um, yeah. like you want to be the expert. So you want to be the expert, but mm -hmm. you also want to be the active listener. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, just ask them a lot of questions. What are you doing? What are you challenged with? How do you find your clients or like, that's what I would say. Cause I, you know, in client attraction, like how are you finding clients is, you know, is there, is, are there challenges, um, you know, that I can help support you with? Are you looking for JV partners? I have a big network. Um, so maybe I can connect you like, like, you know, thinking from a service first, how can I support will go a long way um, in any networking event, any, especially and like absolutely in JV conversations. So if you go in, into joint venture directory, um, you know, JVXX, uh, JVIC, any, any joint venture conversation, they'll always say, you know, let, like, let the other person go first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? 
You guys yes. are really um, quiet. Can you hear me? Yeah, Carlos, go ahead. Yeah, so um, how about for custom software? Uh, we build custom software and sometimes it's a little hard to get new clients. Uh, what is the custom software? So what what's this, what's the problem that your three your ideal client is waking up with? Well, um, we're pretty much a problem solver, so um, it can be anything from a CRM uh, integration with QuickBooks, um, you know, in API integrations, anything like that. So we do all of that stuff. Uh, but you know, sometimes it's good to hear from other people what their um, criteria is or what they're looking for for when they're looking for you know custom software. You know, so we go back and uh, to a business, and if they're using Excel or anything like that, we go back and we say, "Hey, uh, we're going to build you a whole uh, paperless system," mm -hmm. um, and we build them a you know a business logic into the software based on their business. Right. So nobody wakes up at 3 a.m. thinking all that. They wake <laughs> up they wake up thinking, how do I make these things talk to each other? Right. Or this is such a pain in the butt. I just wish I could find somebody to make this go away. To just make it work. Right. Like, I don't care how, just make it work. Right. So you really need to get on, you know, you um you need to get into the benefits of what you're doing. So you save time. Um, you don't have to worry about things falling through the cracks. You don't have to follow up. Like it's it's automated, it's not manual. Um, you know, like what are the benefits of all of that? Because custom software, like like that sounds like just two words sends shivers down my spine. It sounds expensive and it sounds um it sounds complicated. And it's probably not, but that's what people will automatically think. But if you're somebody that says, look, you got like seven programs out there that are all like not really talking to each other, we can help you, you know, we can trans we can be your translator. We can be your tech translator. Be like, mm -hmm. oh, I want to know more about that. Okay. Yeah, that sounds that sounds good. Thank you. No problem. Uh, Gwen, can you talk more about the chameleon mindset quiz you helped with? What new ideas, solutions did the client leave with after they took the quiz? Um, so after they took the quiz, they they left with two or, or three or four different uh, strategies to help them with the way that they're reacting to different um, to to change. So if they were if their chameleon was red. That meant that they they approached change or they reacted to change in a very aggressive and negative way. So they they get angry, they get like they lash out. So when they are faced with change, what are some of the things that they can they can lower their temperature? Um, they can you know um, walk away with maybe you know like make sure that you take five minutes before you react or don't send that email until tomorrow or you know like things like that. Like what what are the um, some of the um, things that you can do to make sure that you soften those triggers. That's that's what she was working on. And that's what the whole book is about. So she was just, that's the other thing is that you guys are the experts. So, you know, creating these things, you've already got it in your head. It's a lift and shift, right? It's a lift and shift from your course, from your book, from your, from just the knowledge in your head. So it's not like you have to go out and create a massive amount of new content for this it's already in like you've already got it cool cool i have another question now um catherine awesome. yeah so would you recommend having an email list um yes. as of as a major follow-up tool i right. would i would suggest that your email list is one of your biggest business assets Mm -hmm. and that you should always be building your email list okay so gift giveaways summits like basically you don't have a business without clients and you got to keep track of who you're talking to and that's and an email list is a way to do that right because don't forget like 95 percent of people won't buy on their first time that they hear from you right right mm -hmm. 95 97 percent 
that's a lot of people who say no to begin with. That's a lot of people to have on your email list to go back to so that you are continually in their in their mind when they are ready to go and pull the trigger. So you want to be you want to make sure that you're still like on their radar screen for when they are ready. Mm -hmm. So so when would the quiz come in? I know that you you did mention the quiz. Um, so on your email list for the first time, would it be a good idea to send your quiz for the first so follow? It depends. It depends on when they joined your email list. A lot of people join my email list through the quiz. Like that's how I get mm -hmm. their emails because they don't get the report. And they don't get the solutions until they give me their email address. Mm -hmm. Like that's how I get, and that's how I actually build my list. Right. So, so if I'm doing, mm -hmm. so today I put out quizformybiz.com. If you go to quizformybiz.com and you take my quiz, at, at some point in time, it's going to ask you for your email because I need to send you a report. Mm -hmm. Right. So in order to send the report, I have to send you an email. Well, now that email is in my email list. Oh, so it's your lead magnet. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Check the chat. Uh, Corey, so I'm actually... I'm currently targeting fairly new restaurant owners who have food truck vendors who haven't built up enough of a following. How to convert or bring them to quiz process and build trust if they're not used to people asking asking them those 3 a.m. questions. So Corey, I'm not understanding. Um, I'm currently targeting fairly new restaurant owners and food truck vendors. Cool. Haven't built up a following. Okay. How convert or bring them to the quiz process? So what you can do is you can you can use your quiz to target them to say, are you trying to build a following? Or are you trying to um, you know, are you new and you need like you need that photography? So the 3 a.m. question is their 3 a.m. question that you want to solve so that you can help them, the people that are ready for you, um, to have a conversation further on how you can do that. So you're not you're not necessarily going out and asking them, hey, what do you wake, like, like you can ask them what you're waking up with, but essentially the 3 a.m. or the quiz hook, that first question is, is like that question that draws them in and wants and makes them want to to learn more. Right. Cause they want, they want an answer to like, they want to know how to increase their following, right? Like how to, how to get people to flash mob on their, on their food truck or, or, you know, um, get a Twitter following that follows them from place to place, like corner to corner. Um, so how can you use that problem or that, you know, that, that thing that they desire in order to, to draw them in and, and show them how to do that. Hopefully that helps. Uh, so, uh, Gwen, I got your question. Let me just go to Corey first, uh, quickly to finish this off. How would you approach this if you're meeting them for the, so if you're meeting them for the first time in person, I would just, I wouldn't even bring up the quiz. Like if you're trying to do some market research and you're trying to ask them like what their biggest challenges are, I just, I just have that conversation with them. Right. So like, you know, like that, then it's like, if you're actually going out and meeting them and saying like, this is what I do, are you um, like, make sure like similar to Leon's question, make sure that you're, you're starting with what are your challenges? What are your, um, you know, what, like, what can I help you with? How can I support? Hopefully that helps. Um, oh, Gwen, this is a great question. Thank you for asking this. Is there a risk that a quiz offers too much help? And clients don't need you because the quiz outcome is all the info they need. Okay. I'm so glad you asked this. So here's the deal. If information was the only thing that people needed, they would have it because YouTube is already out there. If information was the only thing that people needed, everyone would be billionaires. Right? Give it all away. 
give it, give it all away because that's not what they're paying you for, right? They're paying for accountability, for action, for mentorship, for your experience and expertise. They're not, nobody pays for information anymore. Information is a commodity, right? If they're just looking for information, they can go off and get that on YouTube. And if they're just looking for information, they're probably a freebie seeker, right? So if they go away and they don't, they don't actually connect with you, God bless, right? Like off they go because they're somebody else's best, right? So you want to attract your best and release the rest because they're not, they're never going to buy. So if they just run with the information that you've given them, wish them the best. Off you go. Bless your heart, right? I mean, that, I love it. I love it. I love it when people don't follow through and I love it. Not, I, I don't love that when my ideal clients don't follow through, but you know, like when people drop off my quiz or people don't take that next step, fantastic. Then we don't have to have an awkward conversation that this isn't right for them. Right. So don't ever be afraid of giving away your content. Right. And, and that, that you've given so much away that they'll, they've answered the question. Because information is not the only thing that they should be looking for. And your ideal clients want more than just information. Because the information is out there. Thank you. Great question. Any other questions? How soon after... Oh, sorry. How soon after follow-up can we do our presentation? Leon, can you can you say more about that, please? Okay. Um, so when can we do a sales presentation? Like um, like say we, we we got their number and we collected their business card. Um, should we follow up the next day, for example, and present our business? Or should we listen to their presentation first? Because usually they will have a presentation for their business. Um, so I'm just trying to sequence. So what typically what happens is if somebody goes, so if I'm on a summit like this, so if I'm on this and you all have, have gone to quiz for my biz, right? I've gotten your email. You'll get an invitation to my next masterclass, which is November 7th, right? So you'll actually get an invitation to that masterclass. Um, but I have that already set up. Like I have that automation and that process that's, that's part of the funnel. I already have that all set up, right? Um, that masterclass actually does have an offer for, um, for a course at, at the end of it. Like, the, I mean, that that's, you know, fair game, right? Um, so it's, it's more about, do you continue, do you want to continue to learn about this? And therefore you take the masterclass. It's, it's less about, I need to know more about you and you need to know more about me. Does that make sense? Hmm. So if, like, for example, if you're getting good, like a good feedback from your quiz, um, what can be a, the next possible move? Like, could you go into more detail with your products or your services, right? Um, so like if they're responding well and they're saying so that can, they need. If they respond well to the quiz and you want to have them schedule a one-on-one -on -one conversation so you can discuss how you can work together, you can do that. You can do that. You don't have to have a masterclass or a webinar. Mm -hmm. Like if they go through the quiz and they say, yes, I want to, I want to have, like, I want to take the next step with, with Leon. And then you send them to a booking link, they can book with you. Mm -hmm. Right. It just depends on the offer. It just depends on the, on the value add. It depends on what you're, what you're doing. So, um, you know, like some, some people have just one-on-one -on -one coaching. What is it that you do, Leon? I'm in uh, financial services and, and investments. Okay. Um, and, and are you working in a firm now? I'm independent. So I'm my own broker. Okay. Or, um, yeah. so, so the one thing about quizzes and emails and so on, I don't know how it works in the U S um, I'm not, I'm not as, as savvy in the financial. I used to work for TD bank up here in Canada. Um, but one thing about quiz and any materials that you're sending out, I, I don't know how compliance works. 
So for you, for financial services and, and brokerages and so on, I just be really careful to make sure that you're in compliance. Mm -hmm. um, so just like, that's just an, an offshoot. Um, anyone in health care too, like with HIPAA, just be careful that you're in compliance anytime. Um, but yeah, if you, if you wanted to do a financial services or a, a brokerage kind of quiz, and if they wanted to continue and, and book a call with you to learn more, absolutely. That can go straight to a sales call mm, if it's okay. compliant, if you're allowed to do that. Okay. I just don't want to get you in trouble with a quiz. You know, yeah, I guess that's how you word it. Yeah, you have to word it a certain way. Like um, Exactly. So just make sure that you, you get co whatever compliance that you need. Just make sure. Because I, I have a client right now that's in a financial strategist. And she's doing a quiz and like everything has gone through compliance. So I just, I don't want you to get in trouble with a quiz. Okay. I don't want you to say, Catherine told me to. And then we have to have that discussion because it'll start an international incident. And let's not do that, Leon. You know, like, let's just, let's just not do that. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Catherine, for that valuable talk and for answering the questions of our guests. Well, um, if uh, some people still have questions, how can they, uh, how can people reach out to you personally, aside from um, uh, the quiz for my biz.com and then the Catherine.com? Uh, yeah, well, you can always email me at, I'll put my email in here. Um, but honestly, the best, the best way to kind of get into my world is to take the quiz and, and then to come to the masterclass and I can, the masterclass is, is where we can play a little bit with, you know, with what quiz might work for your business. And it's a, it's a little bit more interactive. So that's a lot of fun. Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate your time. So now we're on the last part of our event, our takeaways and gratitude circle. So we highly encourage you to raise your hand if you want to share any takeaways that you had on this event or if you just want to give your appreciation to our speaker for today. So uh, let me just okay. read what, yeah, okay, go with Jan. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Um, So I learned a lot from Catherine, um, so thank you, Catherine, for that. And one of my key takeaways, like, um, is really the relationships, I guess, um, like approaching it, not from a sales point of view, but from a relationship point of view, like, um, like get to know them and provide a solution first. And I, I like how you like bridge the gap and you mentioned the steps first, like you have to guide them first, right? It's like, it does not sound salesy. Like when you ask them questions and you guide them and like being a doctor. So that's my biggest take where you have to be like a doctor, be like an interviewer in a way and get to the bottom of it. So I thank you for that. Well, thank you, Leon. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Welcome. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing that, Leon. I would You're also welcome. like to read um, some comments here and oh, uh, I really appreciate this webinar from Corey Hutchinson. I am looking forward to the next one on November 7th. Thank you, Catherine. And Sabine said, thank you very much for sharing your expertise. Yeah, so let's hear Gwen. Uh, just wanted to really echo what Leon said about the, the idea that sort of seeing our businesses as like the doctor kind of model. I think uh, that was kind of a big takeaway for me too. And Catherine, you reminded me like how important it really is to listen well, right? To really, really listen and ask questions, you know, and, and kind of knowing what clients need is always, you know, has to happen first before we can kind of start saying what we have to offer. So that's an amazing takeaway for for me this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. And and Gwen does get the uh, prize for the best question because that, that question about the content was, was awesome. And Leon's questions were great too. Everyone's questions were great, but, um, but thank you, Gwen. There's also more questions in the chat box. I mean, sorry, more comments in the chat box. It says from Karen, thank you so much for this presentation. My key takeaway 
get really curious with my ideal client and really tune into their 3 a.m. issue and create conversation around it that can also help bring them closer to me. Thank you so much for the valuable information by Stephanie Simcoe. And Gina says, thank you for this valuable information. Truly valuable, I agree. All right. So um, if anybody else would like to share, um, you can also send your appreciation um, through uh, Catherine's email. And uh, just to wrap up, I'm really, really, really thankful for everyone who showed up at today's event and most especially to our speaker, Catherine O'Leary, for really sharing us her insight and knowledge in uh, bridging the gap, communication gaps with our clients. So once again, thank you so much for showing up at today's event. Our next event is going to be on October 31st, 2023. And we are going to have Brooke Schiller talking about turn rejection into connection with four critical communication tools. So to sign up for that, you can go to this URL that I will put in the chat box. There you go. So once more, thank you so much, everyone. And we will see you on the next event. Take care.